welcome to um, another another webinar. Um, it's good to uh, see you here. And if you're not here with us in person, then if you're watching the re-recording um, version of this, um, please send us um, some questions if you've got any afterwards. Uh, we're more than Emma and I are more than happy to um, answer those. So today's um, webinar is about how to use the class notebook. It is um, sort of aimed at support staff in schools and it's around intervention groups but please don't feel that you know if you are a class teacher or you're in leadership that you can't watch this webinar it is sort of aimed at everybody but with a more, more of a um i suppose um the aim to sort of support support staff in the classroom and in schools um I'm not doing any of this today. Um, Emma's taking um, taking the reins today and has kindly offered to um, walk us through this. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this webinar and I know there's going to be some great information on this. So um, Emma, I don't, I'll let you introduce yourself. I always introduce you, but I'll let you introduce yourself <laughs> and um, looking forward to watching. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so my name's Emma Smallwood. I am a year six teacher and the blended learning champion at Moak Hill Primary School. Um, and today I've just put together this webinar about how to use the class notebook and a little bit of a focus on um, how to use it with intervention groups as well. And um, so I know that's something that is, you know, support staff is a key role that they do. Um, but like Joe said, I think this would be helpful for anybody who's getting started with class notebook uh, and one note and wanting to use it with their children. So I think the biggest thing is um, you hear class notebook a lot, which is what we use in teams, and you also hear OneNote. And one of the things that I found, especially with the support staff that we have, is that they don't make that link that they are the same thing. Um, and your class notebook is a, a basically OneNote integrated into teams. So they are, if you're talking about them in this context, it is very much the same thing. So to access your class notebook, um, you'll be in a team, and within Teams, you'll be able to see that at the top of the general page, it comes up with a class notebook. And when you click on that, it will open it up um, in within Teams and it won't take you off to any other platform. It will just open it up within Teams and you've got all the features of OneNote within Teams. And that is the, probably the best place to get your children started um, and for other staff as well, showing them how it's integrated into your Teams. However, you can click on the open in browser button and this will then take you to the dedicated OneNote app. And we found that in school, having the OneNote app for their class notebook is, is a lot more accessible. It's easier to use. We find that the pages sync up better. Um, so we found that the children by just, if I go back, clicking on the open in browser, once they do that, once their OneNote is all synced up with their class notebook with all of their work. So once the class notebook is opened in OneNote, you'll be able to see at the top, it comes up with the team that the, what the, the notebook is attached to. Um, and as teachers and support staff, you might have more than one notebook. So you might have your personal, you might have different classes, but for the children, they tend to just have their, their one notebook that they've got open with their classwork. So I've also put on some um, screenshots of what it looks like on an iPad. And um, because, again, that was all on a screen on a laptop. However, I know from my experiences that um, a lot of support staff do have iPads to access in the classroom. So I've just put on a screenshot here of what it looks like in the Teams app on your iPad. So you should be able to find all your teams on the left hand side. And once you click on the more tab, you can see that, again, it comes up with class notebook. So even on your iPad through Teams, you can still see the class notebook. And we found this is great if your, your TAs or LSAs can get set up with this. They can access children's work just as you can. And that's a really good support. And um, um, I'm just sorry, I'm interrupting, but I was just going to say that's a really key point, isn't it? It's um, because often the layout, um, I suppose, throws people off, doesn't it? Yeah. And they just think, I can't access this. It doesn't look the same. Yeah. I can't do it. But actually, it's a great, yeah, great idea to actually show this. Um, and, and again, it's a quite a similar layout on the, on the mobile phone, isn't it? Yes, yeah. 
and I think it's just nice to see because obviously if children are using laptops and you've got an iPad it's just seeing the two different ones so you can see what you're doing and what the children are doing um, and if you want to access Class Notebook on your iPads you will need the OneNote app uh, but once you click on Class Notebook um, through Teams it will automatically take you to the OneNote app and again all of your um, work will load up there automatically and you can flick through different uh, notebooks as well just like on the computer. So I just thought it was nice to show those two um, different ways of accessing it and the fact that Class Notebook is OneNote integrated into Teams and if you're using both of those it's, it is sort of interchangeable in this context. So um, within Teams and within your Class Notebook and your OneNote you'll have different sections and within sections you have pages. And again, it's just getting used to that vocabulary of different things. And I think sometimes it can seem a bit overwhelming when you hear sections and pages and groups. But a section is basically a folder and a page is just like the page, the work, the worksheet that they're doing. Um, and just to sort of reiterate that your class notebook will have a few different sections. So you'll have a section called the collaboration space. And this is where multiple people can work on a page at the same time and you can all work on that together. You'll then have the content library, which is where teachers or adults can upload things for the children to see, but they can't edit it. So if you wanted to, say, put a word mat or some sort of scaffolding for all children to see, this would be where you put it because they can't edit it. They can just view it. And then you'll have your teacher only section and children can't see this. It's only visible to adults in the team. So whatever adults you've got, they'll all be able to see the teacher only section. And that's where you'll store your lessons or any worksheets that you want to give out to the children. And the children all have an individual notebook as part of this, a section. And as a teacher or an adult, you will be able to see all the children's names, whereas the children just see their own name. So they don't see what you see. They just see their own work, which I think is quite important to know as well, because sometimes it's a worry that, you know, you've got all their children's work, but the children can only see their own. And Emma, just going back to that point as well, it's good because... Obviously, then teachers can ha make those notes within the notebook and it is just a conversation between them and the child, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Not. Um... And, yeah. And like we, we, we talk about later about individualising work, you can make sure that children do get, you know, personalised feedback or things that they need just for them without sort of handing out different things. And I think it's a little bit more discreet and it can be more personalised to the child. Um, and I've just popped a little screenshot on here of what the sections look like. Um, so you've got collaboration space, content library, teacher only, and then I just marked out one of the children's names. But you'll have all the children going down um, from the adult view. So in the collaboration space, that is where you can work together on things. So I just put in an example that when we do group research, rather than traditionally we pop out sugar paper and children would write on there, we give them a page in the collaboration space and they all have access to it and they can all add their own notes. And then they were able to um, sort of as a group decide who was doing what research and then it's all on one page all together. And the great thing from a teacher point of view is that next to what has been written, you get the initials. So, for example, in this piece, they they'd split it up. So there was three sections of research, a different child did each bit. But even just looking at it from my teacher perspective, I could see the three initials. So I could see which child had done which bit of research. And again, it gives a little bit of accountability as well of who's done what, making sure that even though it's a collaborative piece of work, children have all contributed um, as much as you'd expect them to. So I think the collaboration space is great for, um, you know, group work, anything um, to do with collaborating on ideas, um, anything that you want the children to work on, but still have that evidence and um, that they've done it and you can see that as well, which I think sometimes is where you might lose it if you do things on sugar paper, on big pieces of paper, sometimes those get lost, whereas this gives a very clear um, evidence of what they did do in that group work and they can all access that which is fantastic for, especially if you want in a group to work together to support each other, they all have access to it and they're all able to then use each other's work. And then moving on to the next section that you'll see is the content library. And this is where you can store pages that you want children to see, but not edit. 
So the way that we've been working um, to use this is sort of like you would for your working walls or any scaffolding that you want to give to children, putting them on here so that they have direct access to anything that you want to support them, whether that's um, giving them their toolkit for writing or maybe a fraction wall for maths, anything that you think that the children will need. And it's really nice then because it builds your laptop in as more of a toolkit. And the children might be working in their books, but they have their laptop there um, more as a support and actually to give themselves that scaffolding. And I think it promotes independence as well, because while she might have a working wall with all these details on, not every child might be able to see that. Not every child might be able to get up and walk um, across the room to go and view what you've put on there. However, when you've got the content library as your working wall, you've got children can have direct access to it and then they've got no excuse to be using those resources and they can take ownership and accountability of their work and constantly go and find things to improve it and we found that really useful and once children get in the swing of things and um, it's really good and especially again for interventions if you want resources accessible to all children again a great place to put them and you can have different sections and different folders for all the different things that you want um, children to access. And then the teacher only section is where you will, as adults, create pages um, and that's where you'll put your work where then you can then send it out to children. The children can't see this section. It's only adults who are in the team that can see it. So how we've used it is for our lesson tasks. So we have our subjects and then we break it down into terms and weeks. When we first started using it, we did use it with small groups and intervention groups. And again, you can have that section saying, you know, um, let's say Mrs. Smith's intervention group and have all the resources that you would need um, for that that you want to send the children. And again, it's a really nice way of, you know, you can order everything. It can all be in weeks and terms and you can go back. And again, you have that evidence and that accountability of things being done. And there's no chance of it being lost in folders or misplaced. Um, and again, with our with our work that we send out for our children, we're able to, and I'll talk about this a bit later, but again, embed in support, videos, um, audio, research, uh, websites that they can use. But again, this teacher bit is just for you as the adults and the children can't see this. And then moving on to the, the last section will be children. So as an adult, you see all the children and you can see all of the work that they've done. So, for example, here I've sent it out. So we've got our units in English and then each piece of work that I've sent has the date and the title um, and it's organised very neatly and the children can't really change that either. So, again, it's sort of like in books, you have that expectation for um, presentation, the same here. And again, when we were using it for our intervention groups mainly, again, you've got that really nice organised dates and the key title of what the learning was um, each lesson. And you've got that really, really good um, yeah, evidence and it builds up a really nice um, overview of actually the progress that they've made each week, uh, which is really nice to see. Emma, could you just mention how... Um, I know you create, you know, the, you create those pages of learning for the children. Can you also um, just mention how you set that so that when the children use the page, the things on that page don't move? That yes, that yeah. All right, that's thank you. a really key bit. And um, as you can see on the um, screenshot that is on the screen, um, one thing that we do is we change the background colour, which is really good, um, especially if you do have children with dyslexia or and um, they might you know might not respond as well to a, a white background. One of the things that we did find as well is if I put images or a screenshot, for example, of their toolkit, like on the screen now, uh, sometimes they might delete that picture or they might move it. And that would really, you know, disrupt the lesson and it might disrupt, you know, the whole flow of things. Um, and you are actually able, if you want pictures in your on your page, when you right click on it, you can set it as a background. And once it's set as a background, the children can then write over it. They can't delete it. They can't move it. Um, and we found that that has massively uh, decreased any disruption or children losing work or losing questions that we'd put on that page for them. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's probably my best top tip uh, for using for on your pages. Uh, you can also add squared background or lines on the page as well. 
and you can really adapt it to however you want for your children and I think that is a really key thing for again expectations if you've got lines on there you've got squares on there if you're doing let's say a maths intervention there should be no excuse that they don't set out their work exactly like they would in a book and I think that's really nice for children as well to see that mapped over and um, that they still have to do the same expectations. So um, in the children's uh, notebooks, um, as I showed earlier, in their name, if, under their name, sorry, we set ours out in topics and then we do terms and then weeks. Some people ch have chosen to do uh, a term and then within the term, all the different subjects. And again, it's whatever works best for you and your school. Um, but I just wanted to show you how you would um, sort of distribute to send um, a section to the children. So if, for example, you were, you wanted to then start an intervention group and you think, actually, I'd like to start that on OneNote, you could send out a section called interventions and you'd then be able to send all, all the work uh, through to the children um into that group and again um, if you add extra subjects or um we've added recently a homework section that's how um i'll just quickly show you how to do that so right at the top of your OneNote, it will have a section called class notebook and you've got the options to distribute page distribute new section um, and that distribute new section is how you send a folder to your children. So if you have got nothing on your class notebook and you're starting afresh, you'll have to send out all those different subjects or to send out um, the terms, however you are setting yours out. And again, it's quite nice that you can add to that um, as you're going because we started off with our core subjects and we've slowly added as the children have become more um, confident. And again, different interventions have popped up. So we've had been able to create new folders to keep all that work organised um, and sectioned off from each other. So this is um, again just showing you how we've set ours out. And I think for us, I definitely think in subject and then terms has worked really well. But again, it's whatever your children um, are used to. Um, I'll talk a little bit as well about how to distribute the work to the children. So once you've created um, a worksheet or you've created something in your teacher only section, you then want to be able to send it out to your children. And again, once you've clicked on the page that you want and you're on there, you go back up to that class notebook tab at the top and you click on distribute page. And when you click on distribute page, it will come up with a couple of options. So just an example here, when you click on distribute page, you can distribute it to all children, to individual children or to groups of children. And one of the things that we found the most helpful is the groups of children um, section. So once you clicked on distribute page, you can select group distribution. And then on the side, we've got all of our different groups. So we've got guided reading interventions. We have got spelling groups. And it means then I, I can set I can have different work differentiated different groups and then send it out to um, particular groups without having to go down a list and select all the names and remembering who's in what group. This just makes our lives a lot easier because then you can know that all the children doing uh, Mrs Smith mass intervention are in that group and it's all been sent to them in one go, which is a really, really nice and easy way of organising the children into groups. And the best thing that I found is that they don't know that their work is different to each other. And again, I feel like that's something that you know children do, sometimes do notice that they might have different work to each other but this is a really nice way i think of you're able to send out personalized individualized work um, and children are just focused on themselves and they're focused on their work um, and they don't realize that you know everyone might have something different so definitely distributing to groups um is definitely the best thing um one of the best things on there as well uh, if you want to add a new group again on the screen um right at the bottom it's just a new group so you can create as many groups as you want um, and we constantly change ours and it's very easy to do so so i just want to talk a little bit now about the collaboration space and i think that's been really helpful for us again for group work but also for interventions as well thinking about reducing workload reducing marking we tended to start using that 
um, to help children see each other's work, but to also work together and collaboratively um, on different problems. And again, I think that's a really key skill that you do learn with with maybe using more technology is that children do get really good at those skills like um, perseverance, resilience, teamwork, because the technology enables that, which is fantastic. So I've just, oh, sorry. Go for it. <laughs> just trying to get, get um, asked at the right time. Um, I was just thinking that the slide just before you went into this section, um, yeah, just there. Can you just explain how you, um, when those children would go out and use the OneNote within school you know, and how that works with um, support staff? Is that okay? Just a little bit around how that works. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, thank um, you. For example, at the moment, we're doing um, an arithmetic intervention. So it's a lot of repetition and we're working on key skills every week. Um, so we are we plan the work as teachers and I've got the work um, in my teacher only section and I will send that to the particular group that I know are going out in that afternoon. And then the children have all got that in their intervention section. And they'll go out with their laptops with the adult and that adult has got on her screen the work as well and is able to view the children's work and sort of help them through their laptop as well. So the children, once they're used to finding those sections and finding where the work is, um, it works quite well. And I think it's very good for reducing paper. But again, you all your evidence of what's happening is in one place. And I think that's really important. I think sometimes folders go missing, <laughs> and sometimes work gets missed. Um, and even for you know tracking children that are missing interventions for absence again you've got you've got that record and I think it's opened up a lot of possibilities and things I'd never thought about before of how it does benefit us that's great so, yeah, thank you that's all right so on our collaboration space um one of the things that I've try to do um, is try to fit in little um, interventions when we've got pockets of time before assembly at the end of the day and one of the things that I try to do to reduce my workload and also make the biggest impact on the children is really really short simple interventions with a group of children on the collaboration space and I set it out so the children have got their own column and my columns at the at the start to model um, and then once they've done, they will then choose somebody else's work to mark and they can mark it for each other and we'll go through the answers together. And again, it 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 promotes a bit of like deeper thinking, because actually if somebody's got it wrong, whereas the other children have got it right, another child can then go on with a different colour and explain how they did it. And sometimes that that child to child, that peer to peer teaching is, is really effective. And it's really nice to see actually a bit of a different side of children coming across. Um, and I just put in, we try to do, I've got a group of girls in my class who I see most mornings um, and they mark each other's and they leave little notes to each other. Um, and you know, once you've trained them up that they just look at their column and they don't look at other children's work, you know, it, that's not an issue at all. And because it's all on one page for me to see, again, it's fantastic. And that peer marking and being able to respect each other whilst also helping each other learn. And um, again, another skill that we hadn't thought about before, but has really developed. And um, just another way that we've been using it um, in maths, um, uh, you know traditionally we might have made revision cards for different topics that we've done we've moved more now to having a collaboration space where the children will make notes of how to um, do things for example adding two fractions they've got a section for themselves and they make notes in um, whatever colour they want um, and they can make their own notes and it makes more sense to them. And I think sometimes as adults, we are, I want to give them things to help and I'll give them um, a resource and say, oh, this is, you know, how to add two fractions. But actually they're making their own scaffold and their own resources, their own revision cards has been fantastic. Um, and it's really nice to see actually that they develop um because i think revision is one of those skills that's really hard to teach but actually reading through their work they've made you know a how-to of fractions for themselves and they refer back to that constantly they refer back to each other's and again something that we hadn't thought of that's developed over time and has been a fantastic resource for the children and um, so what we've mentioned before about we were saying about personalizing learning again you can 
um, set individual tasks for children. You can give all children the same work, but with just slight differences. Um, and I think that's been one of the huge benefits of using OneNote is that personalization, individualization of learning. Um, and, and so simple as well, just making slight tweaks to suit different children. Um, I've just got some examples. So, for example, we're scaffolding uh, planning of a text. So most children will have, um, you, you know, they've got links to go to, they've got places to help on the content library. But some children do need that key vocabulary and they need that picture dictionary to support. And again, I've been able to just copy and paste that into a page and then I'm able to send that to individual children and all the other children will get something um, slightly different. But again, that would ordinarily have been me printing out resources, making sure they're laminated, chopped up and giving them to children. Um, and actually, that was a bit of a in the moment they needed those key vocabulary. I, we quickly uh, made that and were able to send it to them straight away. And I think, again, whatever's going to whatever those children need to help them, you know, you're able to do that, I think, a lot easier and um, more discreetly. And yeah, you can differentiate and add whatever you need for those different children. And I think what I, I, think like, what there, I like there right, is it's in the moment, isn't it? Yeah. So you can think about it. And whereas usually with a workbook, paper workbook, you kind of, yeah, you can't do that. Can't, you can't the the photo, yeah. Yeah, yes, that's it. I'll go to the printer. So, yeah, you're absolutely that's a really powerful point. And one of the things um, that's not quite individualizing, but for the for all children is if we've if we've made a list of, um, let's say, ideas on a flip chart together um, and I've digitized it on the screen. Normally, I'd either have to leave it up on the screen or we'd have to wait a day until I print it out, put it on my working wall. But now I can quickly print screen and put it on the content library and they've all got that immediately. And again, it's that in the moment, instant things that are going to help them that normally would have had to been, we have to wait until we can print it out and then give it to you another time. And I think that in the moment reactive teaching is, is really helpful with the technology. And just one other thing, we um, have got different groups um, for our guided reading. And again, a little bit about accessibility, using tools like Immersive Reader are really easy to do with your intervention groups. Um, and we've got all different groups of guided reading. Some children have more focus on retrieval or inference or summary. And those children are sent those individual work. And um, again, without me having to pre-prepare that before, and print everything out and make sure I've got enough of each, I can just send children individualised, personalised work that is going to build up on skills that they need rather than just a general, we're all doing this today because this is what most of us need. Some children do need something different and it's really nice to be able to send them um, the things that are more more helpful to them and are going to make help them progress in, in their individual way. Um, and so again, just to show you, that you can send it to groups of children or you can send it to individual children. Again, groups are a lot easier because once you've sorted them in the groups, uh, they stay there. But sometimes I find that, like Joe said, in the moment, I'll think, oh, I need to send this to this child because that will really help them. And you can go on the list and just send it to that one child, um, which, again, really helpful in the moment, quick and easy. Um, and once you get you get into it, you realise actually it's a lot more reactive and you can do things for children um, in the moment. So um, just something else I think that really helps. And again, for promoting a bit more independence and making um, learning maybe a little bit different, but creative. Um, you can embed a lot of things into your OneNote pages um, websites, videos, information, audio. And again, these can be used for lots of different things, um, but I've just put some examples of how we've used them. So in our maths um, at the moment, we um, embed a video every single lesson to support the input that has been taught. So we will record um, a quick video going over the key learning, uh, normally about 30, 40 seconds, just a reminder of the key learning. Uh, for example, if it was, um, algebraic expressions, 3x equals 9, breaking that down of how you would find x very simply, very quickly. And we embed those videos to then provide support for children when they're on their independent learning. Because as we know, one person 
and 30 children it's a lot of a lot of children to get around and you can't split yourself into 30 and actually that that 40 second video is there for children to listen to whenever they need and some of our children might listen to it a few times just to give them that confidence other children might not listen to it on that day but then another day need it to support them and I think again it's using the technology to support children without you having to be the one doing it in person all the time um, Emma, Emma, sorry, I was going to say, what what is the response from the children to that? It is it is lovely, and I think actually they just get used to that it's there, and and they listen to the input. And sometimes those children that think, oh, I can't get onto the work because I've not quite understood what Miss has said. Whereas actually those children that think, do you know what? I've got that video to help me. I, I'm going to have a go. I'm going to look back on that to help. Um, is fantastic and I'm talking you know from my year six perspective but we've got um, children in year one and they use um, QR codes and just another another idea to throw out there to support but those the teachers record um, challenges for those children who you know they might have fantastic maths knowledge but if their reading isn't quite there then that's a barrier to to access actually progressing their maths knowledge um, and that video that 30 second video of the teacher explaining how to get started on a problem or just recapping the key input again transforms the children's learning because they can progress themselves and they don't have to have their hand up waiting for you and it's still you on the video you're still helping them but just um sort of yeah you are able actually to split yourself into multiple <laughs> people just going to say that it's yeah. duplication of the teacher isn't it absolutely yeah. what we always in the past wanted to do this enables yeah. it doesn't it yeah and it's really nice as well to make the videos and sometimes we use videos from um for example white rose or century but actually to make that video you know really really quickly is nice because again it's the children hearing your voice they're hearing the vocabulary the way that you speak um again and it would just be echoing what they've already learned um in the input um but also thinking of it in an intervention way if children have misunderstood the learning in the lesson and they're being asked to go out in the afternoon again it takes the responsibility off whatever adults going out and actually you've got that teacher video to play to them again and say okay let's let's listen to um miss smallwood explaining that again and see if we can have another go um at these problems um so i think you know it's very versatile but it's really nice to be able to provide that for the children and again on one note very simple you can just click on insert and video and it's there for them um, and it's really nice that it comes up blue as well because I think it just makes it more obvious <laughs> for the children that they need to click on it. And I'm just thinking in terms of teacher workload is that pretty quick very simple to do have you found yeah yes and we times yeah and we've um really made sure that it is just the it's the key learning that they need to know it's or it's something if we already can preempt that there might be a misconception it's making that little video so that you don't have to go around to every child and say okay let me explain this again let me explain this again um and again some children might not need that video at all but you know we do see children regularly using this because it is then sometimes it's confidence thing um just to give them that more support um but it's re it's just really nice to be able to provide that and again like i said it's a teacher saying it um and that does help them um to then you know progress on to their learning and once they get yeah once they get used to seeing it then they know it's there every day as well and like i said some children might need it in one topic but then we might move on to another unit of work and they do need that extra support and I bet they miss it when it's not there now. <laughs> oh, and they'll point out that it's not there. <laughs> um, I was just going to say as well, I've um, got a comment from um, Rebecca Bonshaw. She's just said, I've seen this being used within the classroom and I think it works brilliantly as they can watch it back. Time, she time, is time, fantastic um, <laughs> at doing it. <laughs> um, but but yeah, nice it's nice to have that, isn't it? Yeah. Nice to have that reassurance that, again, from Rebecca's perspective, you yeah. know, seeing it from that viewpoint, it's it's so powerful. As yeah well. and like she, you know like she said as well it's it is the the response from the children and I think sometimes you do think like you said is this going to add to my workload but actually if it's taken me less than a minute to do and then it means that more children can move on with their work and you know like I can sit with different children and support them one-on-one -on -one, and you know it's fantastic and it is a really really good um tool to have 
So just the other thing was about embedding links for research. Again, I'm in year six, a year six perspective, but sometimes you're asking children to do independent research. And again, that's quite an open ended task and something that is a skill to teach. And I don't think it is as simple as use the Internet to find that information. And, and again, sometimes you want children to go to safe websites, websites that you checked out beforehand. Um, and it's really nice that you can um, add in those hyperlinks really easily into the work. And again, and you can differentiate, you might send some children more hyperlinks to work through. Some children, you might just send them, actually, you need to go to this website and this is where you'll find your key information. Um, but again, you're helping them with that, um, you know, that skill of, you know, not every, not every website you go to is reliable. And actually, these are the, the reasons that I picked these and these are how, this is how I know the information I'm giving you is correct. Um, so that's really nice. And you can add in, um, you know, any website onto there and again comes up in blue as a hyperlink and it does show them that they can click on it and again emma i suppose with that too it's also saving time you know how sometimes it can be a waste of time when children yeah. are searching and i know that sounds awful but it is a lack of that learning time that you worry about isn't it as a teacher when you say yeah. Go on the internet and just search <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah it's so open-ended and you could come up with anything couldn't you <laughs> after, <laughs> after that well, that's <laughs> Um, and again, just another example in our English research, them finding evidence and statistics for themselves. And I've directed them to certain places, but they still have to use, you know, um, their own skill to find out things that will, you know, will actually be relevant to what they're, they're doing. And just one of the other things that you can embed into um, a OneNote page is audio. And I've shown um, how I've done it from a teacher point of view. So I've left a comment um, to one of my children just saying, I really liked how you used um, this evidence and it supports it well. And again, I can record that very easily instead of typing it and then they can hear that. And I think, again, it's nice. I would, I think it's nice to hear your teacher's voice. <laughs> Might be a bit biased, but it's nice that they've got that individual feedback from you. But again, thinking about reducing workload um, in interventions, if you are doing your intervention work on collaboration space as the TA, LSA, HLTA, you could then just record saying um, child A, child B, they really understood. They were, in, you know, able to do X, Y and Z. And, um, you know, child C didn't quite understand, needed this help. And again, it could be a way of recording the feedback from your interventions rather than it being a written um, sheet. The other way you could use it is actually the children giving you feedback, a bit of pupil voice. They could record an audio to you at the end of the intervention or the lesson saying, you know, today I feel confident with this and um, something I still need to work on is is this. Um, and again, if you just click on insert audio, it just starts recording. So again, really easy and, and quite child friendly, really, for the children to access if you wanted to use it for the children. And Emma, I really like that bit about TAs being able to feedback that way too, because often there's not enough time in the day is there to communicate yeah. with one another. But actually, that's yeah. a really great way of using it. Um, yeah. And I think, again, if you are thinking of accessibility as well, if you've got children that maybe haven't been able to write um, all their work or in, you know, in a in a topic lesson for example if they've not been able to get down their ideas they could then record what they've learned um and again it's just giving children different ways of doing things and actually all children being able to um access that that high level teaching that high level expectations but just in different ways um so yeah that's a really nice tool to use and really simple as well um, and the last Thing that I was just going to mention was just I'd had a look on the um, Microsoft Education Centre on the Microsoft Learn of courses that um, do link to OneNote and Class Notebook because actually those courses are a great starting place and they give you all the hints and tricks that you'll need for starting up using um, OneNote regularly. So there is the OneNote for Education um, section on there which is great because that gives loads of different learning paths to get started on. Alternatively, if you go onto Microsoft Learn, you can just search for OneNote and I found that it came up with lots and lots of different ones. And there's one that says get started with OneNote, but again, there's lots of different ones um, telling you about the maths tools and um, collaboration, whatever you're looking to use it for, there will probably be a course on there to teach you um, maybe how best to use it. So I think 
I've come to the end and I'm not sure if there are any questions right now but like Joe said more than happy to answer any questions um of anybody has about OneNote um and all the things that it can do because it can do a lot that was amazing Emma thank you and like you say it can do lots more as well I know you only scratched yeah. the surface there but that was brilliant um Rebecca's also just added that um she likes the idea of the child feedback the audio feedback um she, it sounds brilliant especially when they have already completed some writing in that day so it's nice to get that feedback there but I was just going to say as well um with you mentioning the course there I think there was just one um I like you I just had a quick look and I think I've chosen the same course as you Emma but um <laughs> bear with me it's it's the one I've just I've just gone into just one particular of um course just because it links to the class notebook that you were mentioning all the way through um and I've just added this one and if you just scroll down as you know you can see the sort of the layout the agenda of that course and it does mention everything that Emma's spoken about today, you know, the content library, the distribution of sections and pages, um, not necessarily the assignments part, but that student feedback, um, collaboration space, all those things that you touched on really, Emma, are in that course there. Um, but as Emma mentioned as well, obviously there's lots of great courses now on Learn. So, um, yeah, please go on and have a look. But they're, they're the ones that I think um, just add to people's CPD and knowledge, don't they? It just really helps. And sometimes um, like it, it can be very easy to figure out on your way, but actually there are things that just teach you how to do it. And sometimes trial and error is not the best um, way to get through things when there are dedicated courses that will show you exactly, um, you know, how to how to do it. Absolutely. As, uh, Rebecca, I've just turned your mic on. I don't know whether you've got any questions or anything to add, any comments to add to that. Um, I haven't got any questions and I'm sorry I'm late because actually that just seems so informative Um, it's recorded though so we can watch that back can't we? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, just, and you're right. I think it's brilliant. I've got no problems with OneNote. I think it's a really good thing in class. That's great. That's really good to hear. And and like you say, it's when you use it in a balanced way, a balanced mm -hmm. approach, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's It's all of that really and I think it's it's planning it in properly and it's looking, as you mentioned, Emma, at the um, really how you set it up and it's the structure and the, the sections, the pages, how you're going to um, set that up initially as a whole school. So everyone's happy with it, not just you as teachers, but also the children as well. I yeah. Would say. Yeah. And once you've got like that consistency, it does it makes it easier for them when children are moving up because actually when my year six has started this year they were already confident with all of that terminology where to find that work and that was only from you know half a year of using it last year so actually if you've got that working um you know in place and it's very consistent again even with interventions it means that they do run smoother because children have got no issue finding the work getting onto it that they know exactly where they need to be yeah absolutely I agree with what you've just mm. said actually in fairness seeing the fives go up into year six and specifically I think there's uh, a couple of children who have joined late and you can see they haven't had that six months of working with OneNote because j just the way their approach it's very new to them so I think the children who are going to be moving up now are, are going to be brilliant you know we're just going to see mm. more and more progress yeah okay it's definitely now a layered progression, isn't it? Year yeah. on year, you'll see the benefits of what all the the hard work you've put in as well, <laughs> supporting them and um, embedding it properly. So, no, that's just great. Thank you so much, Emma. And Rebecca, thank you for your input as well. Um, oh, you're welcome. Thank you. But the, Emma, that was great what you touched on. So much information there and I think people will get lots from it. But as Emma said as well, if you do have any questions about that, please either contact me and I will pass the information on to Emma or um, obviously um, if you're happy to contact Emma directly, that's fine as well. So um, without further ado, I will let everybody go. I'm sure you're very busy and would like to enjoy your, the rest of your evening. So I will just stop recording there. Um, but thank you very much for joining.